Nost County Talk, we are live. It is not a Thursday at half seven. It is a Friday at half past seven. This week, we've had to push it back one day just due to personal things we've had to sort out. And then also next week, we are at the Football Content Awards, hopefully going to be picking up, um, well, even to be nominated is fantastic, but hopefully picking up the Content Creator Award for non-league so that we'll, we'll be uh, we'll be live on Friday again next week and then back to normal on Thursday. Uh, George, what? What is it now? 10, 11 days ago before we played, maybe 13 days ago before we played Altrincham, it was all rosy. What's happened? It's crazy, isn't it, really? There's so many things you could put it down to. You've obviously, I, I think for me, one of the main things that I feel is we're missing like a real good holding midfielder. Um, someone who's going to be really gritty. And I mean, it's, it's obvious that we're going to say like a Doyle, but. I don't, fair enough, short term, it might work. Um, I say it to you, Tom, wasn't I? Maybe bring Doyle in and put Francis next to him to, to, to give him that sort of exposure to playing next to Doyle and how Doyle wants him to play in an actual game. Um, do you do that in a league game? I don't really think you should do that in a league game. But Tam was a good opportunity to do something like that, I think. Uh, we've got Kyle Cameron who's out. We've got Slocum who's out. And it's, it's disrupted. But on the flip side of that, you can make all these excuses, but for large parts of the last two games, we've, we've dominated and we've been the better team. We've had the, the better possession. We've had good chances and we've just let it slip. I mean, Halifax was like, to be honest with you, it, it, you can't have describe it other than a disgrace, can you? Like it, it is a disgrace no, I mean, to, to be 2-0 to, to be up against Halifax that had 10 men. And then to lose the game three two from one of the last kicks of the ball is a joke. Like I, I, I could not believe it. I could not believe it. I thought all those sorts of things were in the past. And like, look, look. And the last first, I admit, I don't think Knots are invincible. This league is. We say it every week. It's it's very difficult. There's every week you look at the re results and the fixtures and you think, Jesus, you can't believe certain teams would beat certain teams and. It never goes one way. And you've just got to look at the league table. Like, sat behind us in the table, you've got Torquay, Wrexham and Stockport. Albeit, I think Stockport and Wrexham have played one less game, but it's there, isn't it? We've played 10, we've got 15 points. It's not anywhere near where we wanted to be. Um, so, yeah, a disappointing sort of week and a half, isn't it? Um, yeah, and I, the, the sooner Cameron's back and, and Slocum, I think the better for me. <clears throat> If we were playing a team that didn't have 10 men, who's the strongest team in the league? Currently, it's Grimsby. If we're 2 0 up at Grimsby with 15 minutes to go and we both teams had 11 players, I still wouldn't, I'd still be disgusted with, with losing. Yeah. So this, the way this... you've said it is disgusting is absolutely spot on. Yeah, no. And you know what? I, I want to say it as well. You know, you put a video out, didn't you, after the game because you listened to it? And mm. I, I just wanted to say, like, I think everything you said in that video was smack on. And you got a bit of flack for it in the comments, but I thought everything you said, I, I agreed with. So I, I can't believe you got a, a little bit of flack for that. But I mean, there's a bit from Halifax fans, to be fair, telling us we're not as good as we uh, as we think we are. We know we're yeah. not, not the last three games anyway. It's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I did say one comment saying on paper we've got a better team than Halifax, and I got a, I got a, a comment saying that on paper we haven't got a better team than Halifax. Yeah, that confused me a little bit. Obviously, it's, that's ridiculous. Not to have one of the best teams on league on paper in the league, and that's why we're so frustrated with what's going on. You know, Altrincham losing one 0 to Altrincham, annoying. Inevitable, we're going to lose a game. The way it's panned out against Woking, the way it's panned out against Halifax, it, it absolutely it's disgraceful. It is to uh, usually when I post a video like that straight after the game and then I come back to it, what are we now, three days later, I've, I've calmed down a bit, but it's not a case of calming down because I was already calm after the game. It was almost, 2-2, it was almost inevitable. Once Knott's had the goal disallowed, I was thinking to myself, well, disallowed goal, what's coming now? And I actually wasn't surprised when it happened. Were you? Uh, not really, as, as gutting as it is. I mean, it, it's not like it's been let's say it's been often that it has happened, but you look at the way we just sort of capitulated against Woking, you just sort of feel like it's, it's very weak, but I remember doing a fan chat with Jordan a few weeks ago, even when we'd won and said it, it almost feels like there's a, 
there's a, there's a problem with but not not so much personalities but you know I, I feel like the squad maybe think they're a little bit better than they are or I, I don't know I, I, it's so difficult because it is a good squad and, and like you said it's probably one of the best squads in the league but there's something there that's just not ticking because once all these players hit form you feel like they could be anyone in the league and th th it's not just one or two players i don't think all players are, are really on the on the best form I, f I feel like for me there's probably only one or two players that have really been a, a good standard in, in the first 10 games do you know what i mean if i was to say now to them like let's let's rate the the, the performance of some players this season um and if I was to say, you know, one, one to 10, one being terrible, 10 being they're having a fantastic season, 10 being sort of the benchmark of, I don't know, Ruben at the end of last season would have been a 10 for me, the way he was going. And a yeah. one obviously being terrible. So if that's the benchmark, how many would be throughout the whole season? How many would be at an eight? An eight, eight or above? I, I don't know if I could put anyone. No, Kyle Walton no. would have been an eight up until recently. I, no, that's harsh. I'll probably put Kyle Walton in at, at an eight for this season. I, I think Matty Palmer as well. Yeah. If he's not an yeah. eight, he's a seven and a half. He's yeah, the only, the only thing that's, that's bugging me about Palmer is he's got to show in that situation, I know it's him on his own, but he's in the centre park. He's got to lead by some form of example. If that was Doyle in his spot last season, there's no way he would have stood for that. He'd have been going absolutely mad. He'd have been going crazy, screaming at players, stopping runs, taking people out of the situations. I just, I know he's a fantastically talented footballer. This might not be his his skill set um, as in a leadership role, but he's he's got to do something. You know, calm the players down. He's a fan, he's a championship player that's played in the championship. Alex Lacey, I've just I've just watched. I don't know if you've seen uh, Birchall's pre-match for Yeovil. Uh, Lace is playing with a knock. That mm. tells me that that tells me there's a bit of panic going on. If you're playing, if you're playing a player that's just been out for months with a knock, that for me is a bit of panic. Swearing up at the end of games, whether whoever it was on the bench, I don't know. I turned off straight away to record the video. Didn't really hear much of it, and I haven't seen any. Videos it was one of the. It. I think it was their assistant coach. That's just getting dragged into it, isn't it? That's just that's just panic. That's mm. losing your head. You want to finish the game straight in the change room, right? How are we sorting this out? We've got a week to sort it, or well, less than a week to sort it out. It, it's it's still very that that result is for Halifax. One hundred percent. That stuff that you see live at a game once in your life. Genuinely do you know what? Is. Do you know what though? I, I feel like we have to learn from games like that, and it's blindingly obvious, and everyone says it. Are oh, this team nasty enough? Yeah, I feel like. Even in his, his post-game interview, uh, Birchner was saying that he was nice and polite to all the people. And like, yeah, like conduct yourself well. But I just feel like I've got to have a bit more of a nasty edge. Do you know what I mean? Like, be, be play nice football. But you know, you, you've got you were in that league where you, you've got to be. It sounds it, you probably should say, but you got to be leaving one in on players because they're leaving one in on you. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I want to see? I want to see as bad as it sounds. In the situation, I want to see more of what Ruben's doing. Yeah, well, the, maybe, no, maybe not, turn not, it down a little bit because some of his challenges have been very rash. I don't mean that. But, I mean sort of... No, I know exactly what, what you're saying. That, that grip to, to win the ball back when the player with the ball has got his back facing you because his ability to do that is unbelievable. But it's just that desire to want to regain possession when he's either lost possession or he's lost like the ball was near him. But I'm, 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 not even, that a little bit. I'm not even on about that. I'm literally on about the way he's gone and got a player... Not not the way he's got a player sent off, oh, sorry. but yeah. the way he's riled them up. After uh, after the <clears throat> the red card, they were so wound up with Ruben, they were flying in on him. There could have been another red card there. Yes, it affects him, could be getting injured, and it affects, do we have to bring him off to, to save him? But literally, I want more of that. I want teams I remember being, it's funny when you look back, I was seething when Barrow was celebrating in front of the yeah. car. I was yeah. fuming. I was walking away from that game like a little... Kid thinking, oh, what are they doing? Why are they coming to our place and celebrating in front of the car? It's me, like yeah. making me so angry. I remember turning around to you and I was thinking to myself, I'm gonna lose my head in a minute. I'll be on the pitch. <laughs> we kept but, turning to each other, didn't we? Like, oh, I'm gonna have these in the fan charts. Gonna yeah, yeah. conduct themselves like but, that. But they but that's what I, oh, yeah, exactly. And, and where are they now? They've had a season in in League Two, and then now and Mark, and Mark Ellis is their centre back. 
you'd be an established League Two club. Barrow, an established League Two club. Think of the ground we went to. I'm going to say it again, established League Two club. Yeah. Almost got blown over because there's no sides to the ground. Like, <laughs> honestly. Good times, man. That was pre-COVID. Well, COVID was happening, but it was pre- That was the like, last away game, yeah. But, but that's what I want. I want a team that people are tweeting us fuming because we've gone there with with we've, we've they're either fuming because we've outplayed them and they've just got nothing else to say yeah. fuming because we've got some players like Ruben that are just so good they're getting wound up you know we're forgetting in this that Ruben scored from like 35 yards from pretty much the touchline what a finish yeah I'm good for him as well because it's such a good goal um, I think both goals are good but obviously Ruben's was a very very good goal what the keeper was doing I don't know um uh, but it's overshadowed, isn't it, by the result? And the I want to put this up. Yeah, I want to put this up from Max. Do you think the team has got better or worse from last season based on recruitment and style of play? Recruitment, we've obviously not got Miller. We've not got Ellis. Um, Hard question for me, that is, at this point of the season. I, I know everyone says judge the team to 10 games in, and that's sort of the cliche thing to say, isn't it? But. It's, it's not been a settled team, has it? Like the, the midfield, especially, which it, it feels like where we're lacking. I think we'd sort not put all of our eggs in one basket as such, but I feel like we'd put a lot of uh, our hopes on the Ed Francis situation working out a little bit better. And I think now the last couple of games have happened and we've sort of missed that holding midfielder. He might get another run, another run out, another chance to prove himself. And I hope he does because we are dying out, dying out for a really good holding centre defensive midfielder. That's the trouble. I want Frank Vincent to play tomorrow, but he's not going to solve that problem, is he? No, he's not. He's literally he's not. not. We need we need some door to have a word with Francis and say, look, you've been out for a, you, you've not been in the team for a couple. Come and show you show us now why you, you're going to come in the team. And you're going to make a difference because we're in a bad way at the minute. Mm. Also, very quickly, Bertrand said Doyle's going to. We've already sort of talked about. It, we're going to. He might start Doyle against Tamworth. Can't, I, I just for me backward step to even bring him in the team it's almost admitting you've made a mistake to bring your 64 year old assistant manager onto the pitch to try and sort things no, out can't say that no no I'm sure George is only 40 years old you yeah, say some things on this channel but if you want Doyle to come back in no no what, I, I, I've said that though I've said that though haven't I? I, I don't think we should use it long term for a long term thing I think if we do use Doyle it's going to I'd like it to be under the premise of maybe we've got an injury and we're a little bit light and we can't cover that position by dipping into the loan market or there's a little bit of a unrest within the squad, which I feel like there is now. And if there's anyone that's going to come in and settle that, for me, it is Doyle. And I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing him come in, maybe even put him on the bench. But I, I just feel like he'd settle a lot. Maybe even put him on later on in the game when we seem to be throwing it away. Do you know what I mean? Because Bertrand said there, there's been times this season where it's felt like a, a Doyle in there would have really sorted things out. Now, whether all this going on really puts the burners on Francis and he's sort of thinking, geez, I need to book up my ideas there. And then he comes on and that's it now. That's his the turning point where he's... He's, in a, he's not there yet, but he's in danger of becoming a Will Patching. That just goes from to, to absolutely nothing. Gone. Gone from the team. That's it. And where does he play? Where's Will Patching play now? I don't know. Northern Clifton Islands. All Whites, someone like that. Woolerton, Woolerton under sixes, I don't know. Oh, jeez. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? It's, this is a league where if you don't perform, you're gone. Like, you, you, there's, there's, you're dropping down a lot. I look at Matt Tootle, he had a very good career um, in the lower football league. He's dropped, dropped away, a fair way down now. You know, Boston, players, yeah, players, you know, if you're not performing here, you're going to be out. And players have got to think about that. Ed Francis is young, but. You know, um, yeah, Patrick plays Ireland. You're right, George. Um, but they're literally, they're not only, in this league, you're not only scrapping for your team. Contracts have gone like that. Players aren't, aren't have done contracts renewed if they're not performing. Um, mm. I want to bring this in as well. Uh, I've, if you've got some questions you want us to answer or to discuss, put them in the comments. Kian says, which position do you think we're lacking in most? And do you think playing out for the bat works? I think it's. For me, I've pretty much said that uh, I think we're missing a, a good defensive midfielder. Uh, in a game against Yeovil as well, where we could possibly see Mitch Rose come on, we're going to have to have a good... 
I mean, he might he might be playing fullback. Who knows? Because they said he's a versatile player, didn't they, when they signed him? So whether the the idea is him to play in, in the middle of the park or fullback, we don't know. But <clears throat> if he is in midfield, it's going to be a, a tough a tough game, and you know he's going to be looking to score against us. Yeah, that would be that would top off an, an awful seven days, wouldn't it? Mitch Rose scoring a winner. Um, <laughs> Where do I think we're lacking? Honestly, defensive mid, like George said. Backup striker. Because look, when did Button last score a goal? I think mentally we're lacking a little bit as well, you know. Definitely, 100%. 100%. When I, I said this to you, I, I rang you after, didn't I? Um, I rang you as soon as I uploaded my video. Mm. And I said, when does this now become an issue? You know, one game you've lost a lead. You know, in a very poor way. Okay, one off. Happens again the next game. I know full well. Obviously, we're heading to Yeovil tomorrow against our better judgment. Um, we go one nil up, two nil up. Every fan in that in that stand is going to be thinking, right? Here we go. Yeovil are going to put some pressure on, and no fan's going to be confident keeping a two nil lead. At the minute. I'd be a bit shaky with a 3-0 lead, genuinely. If, if not got a 3-0 lead, let's say 3-0 lead, 65 minutes, you'll get one back. You'd be nervous, wouldn't you? You'd genuinely be nervous. Yeah. So when, when does this become a problem, become a habit? Because when it when something like this, we saw how destructive conceded from set pieces became. It became a habit. It became known that not conceded from set pieces. Yeah, But we, it was talked about at the fans' forum. It was talked about that much. It was made that big a deal of what in a set piece coach. That literally lost us games. That lost us points. Can see mm -hmm. from set pieces. That became an issue. When does losing leads become an issue? It is an issue. That, yeah, it but, already is an issue. But when is it an issue in the like? Is it already an issue mentally in the players' heads now after what's happened against Woking? You know, after the Woking game, it wouldn't have been an issue because it was a one-off. Now it's happened twice in a row. You've lost a lead against ten men. If that's now an issue and that's a thing that that's going to creep into players' minds, that that's points gone already. That's what yeah, no, I think at the end of the day, these players are human and you, you always look for sort of um, reoccurring uh, things, don't you? And it's, it's occurred now twice in two games. So it's at the forefront of your mind. I do think we've got some good personalities in, in the changing rooms. I do think we're missing that little bit of a nasty edge. We've said it countless times now. But, you know, I was watching Brindley's... Uh, pre yoga video today and that, that's really good you know a very professional player well spoken and you can see that he's sort of got that good mind frame where he can put things to the back of his mind and forget about them and move on and use that as the driving force to improve and I do think we have a couple of other players like that in the squad as well I think Cameron's one of those <clears throat> I'm not sure if Wotton is one of those because it's, he's, he's a fantastic player don't get me wrong I think Wotton's probably Second best player at the club. Second best? Uh, I think so. Really? Uh, uh, after Cal? Yeah, yeah, after Cal. So you rate Wharton higher than Ruben? I think it's close, but I think... What, Matty, Matty Palmer? Yeah. You Top five's odd. I don't know. <laughs> He's I getting some lessons I, online as well. I did. I saw, I saw that someone said Eli Sam should have bought him down. You know, on the third goal, we should have just bought him down. I'm going to defend the guy here because he does get a battering. Kings Lynn at home, if I remember correctly, came on to see out a 2 1 last year, gave a yeah. free kick away, they scored. That's going to be in yeah. his mind, isn't it? Anyway, not yeah. by Eli Sam, he's not going to get many more minutes on the pitch at this rate. So, um, savage tonight, Tom, savage. Nah, it's, it's got to be said, though. Like, we, we praise the team when they're good, and when they're not so good, we're a fan channel at the end of the day. We literally we have to say how it is. There's no good coming on here and saying, well, at, yeah, least, we're led, at least we're led until the 75th minute, and their goals were really good. Like, their goals were very good, but at the end of the day, it shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't even concede one to ten men. Um, there's a lot of things in the comments, George, about we need a rock hard defender, someone that's going to scare players. And uh, Neil Willison is saying that Cameron's out and have gone to pot. What do you think? Yeah, pretty, pretty think much it's all Cameron because Rawlinson's gone at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's obviously there is contributing factors there. So <clears throat> the, the the main. Well, he's the captain, isn't he, Cameron? And I think he, he, he really does sort of lead by example. 
he's a you can see the way he celebrates his goals, how much it means to him. Um, very passionate player, and I, I feel like other than Cameron, really, maybe Jim O'Brien. Do we really have someone like that in the squad? That's missing, isn't it? Big time, big time. And, you know, and I feel like I'm just repeating myself, oh. but that is what we're missing. Yeah, that's what we're missing, big time. Does Does that say to you then that we should be having a player like I know it's a full wait, wait, Kelly, wait, wait. Ke- Kelly Evans? Yeah, no, sorry, I forgot about Kelly Evans. How could I forget? Yeah, Kelly Evans needs to be on the pitch for me. He adds that, doesn't he? I, I'm, he does, I'm, he? Kelly Evans, what was the game when it finished? He was absolutely fuming. Was it a woke, woke him, wasn't it? Woke it. Yeah. He came on, he was fuming. What, what would he, I genuinely think, if he saw what was happening as a, as a fullback, if he saw what was happening on Tuesday, he'd have flown in with some tackles. Yeah, yeah, he'd been putting it about 100%. He, and he would he have been be dropping it. players. Yeah, he'd have been dropping players left, right and centre, I think. But then there's the fine edge to that as well, where... When does it become too much? You know what I mean? Because not with the other things too much. No, no, I know what you mean, but if you if you're starting to get carded and you, you're going off and then you do you go down to ten men yourself, you find yourself. So you've got to be clever with it. I do think Dion is clever with it. I think his height does help him with that. If, if you're going to be honest, mm. but yeah, we're, we're just lacking that sort of grit. But I feel like if the players have learned anything from that Halifax game, it is just that, just to be a little bit more. Nasty, just, just yeah. lean in on your players a little bit more. Give them a, a, a knock when they nudge past you and stuff like that. I think it's hard, isn't it? Because the, it, it's hard, yeah, very hard. That, that, that's their that's their personality. Yeah, it's hard, and to, it's, it's hard to instill that, but you have we have to sort it soon. I think if if you've got a team full of people that want to win. I'm not questioning whether they do want to win in saying this either. I think that's sort of natural to, to get a little bit agitated. It's, it's good to sort of be able to take control of your emotions in, in games like that. And but I feel like it's natural to, to get a bit like that. Do you know what I mean? You know, if it, it's not going your way a little bit, you need to pull your socks up and get stuck in a little bit. Yeah. But that's it's something that Stallo talks about with, I don't think he's a big fan, is he, really, of statistics and next year and stuff like that. Um, like, these things aren't taken into account, really, are they, with the football radar system? Or are they? I, I can't see how they, they can sort of take that into I've, account. I've seen a lot That's, of people saying, we're well, buying ability not put, uh, and not forgetting about personality. Yeah. We, we do have some good personality in the squad, but it's just not that. It literally, all I feel like all that squad's are missing is that nasty edge personality wise i think i think they're all they're all bang on huh one player yeah and it needs to be in, yeah it needs to be in the center of the park okay fair enough yeah i'd agree with that um <clears throat> so we'll look ahead to you in a second for me already no questions asked must win i think we're eight behind already and I've looked at the table, and there's teams like Bromley that are a point above Knots that have played two games less. And you know what? Michael Cheek is leading Bromley. Yes, they've got other players. They don't just play with Michael Cheek against 11 men. He's leading them. Tasha Mangu is leading Chesterfield. When things were going well for us, Kyle Wharton was leading us. We have to have another outlet for goals. We have to. Because we, it's okay when we're outscoring teams, you know, three twos. But when we're only scoring one in a game... Even two is not enough at the minute. So, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Chris has said that in early interviews, Bertram explained the football radar scouting was combined with a character check-in. That's fair, fair enough. But I, I think they've missed, they've missed that, something. No, that is fair enough. But I'd love to know how they gather that data. Mm. Now, yeah. how, how can you do it like a... Is it like the scouts, they're watching their personality and they like... They shout abuse from the stands and see if they react. That's literally, that's how they do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's sub that's the how, week. That sounds good, that does. The sub the other week, I can't remember who it was for. He did pass the personality check. I can't remember who it was. Um, who? Neil has been on our channel as well. He likes to give a bit to some players. And we've had a, he's had a few managers that have given it back. I don't know if Gary yeah. Johnson gave it back one year. Yeah, Neil's the man for that. I used to love yeah. that. When you sat near him, give some, get a little bit back. Yeah, uh, subs that couldn't literally could not keep their head. Um, 
But yeah, we'll, we'll go, we go. We look ahead to the Oval then, and we never do well against them, do we? Or we do very well, but it's always a, it's always difficult, very difficult. Um, are you confident? Obviously, we're, we're traveling down. Do you feel Do you feel like it's a good use of time and money to buy these tickets and head down to Yeovil? A hundred percent. Love it. Up and down the country. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's going to be an exciting four hours on the way down there, isn't it? It's just probably going to be pure silence on the way back. Yeah, I mean, it makes me laugh. We 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 can't make every single away game. We have to pick and choose away games just because of other commitments. And when yeah. we get a free weekend, the last the, the last few free weekends have been Yeovil, Barrow away was a free weekend. We managed to get away, and before that was Hartlepool. It just it falls. I'm surprised it's not been Weymouth and Dover, but um, the way it falls is funny. It's a long it's a long one tomorrow, and I don't know how, if anyone knows how many was sold. Drop that in the um, in the chat, but. Yeovil have, is it Quigley up front? I think they have Quigley. And, and I don't even feel like we need to be scared of other strikers, you know, of informed strikers. I really don't, because we, they don't seem to be our problem too much. It seems to be our own mistakes. I feel like we, oh, it's Joe Quigley, isn't it? We deal with them quite well. Quigley this season's got five and seven. So he's put, he's, he's doing pretty well. Um, are we going to win, George? I don't know. I really don't know. I really you have really to tell me. Know. You have to tell me now. Come on. I'll, I'll give you to the end of the video for your prediction. But do you? It's not. I'm no. Nah, if you're having a bit of time, I'm having a bit. No, nah, no. Nah, I'm putting you on the spot now. Uh, it's literally unbelievably un un impossible. I'm going with what Bob says. We'll be okay for five nil up after seventy minutes. That's my answer so far. Uh, Yeovil haven't won in the last three. I don't know. You know. They lost. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they lost 2 0 to, to Chesterfield. They lost 2 1 to Boreham Wood and they drew 0 0 with Maidenhead. So they scored one in the last three. By that, if I'm doing my maths, they scored one in three. They're probably on for four or five tomorrow, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, um, Conceding yeah, seven it, in two games ain't great, is it? It's not even seven in two, it's seven in about 40 minutes of football. It's almost a goal every five minutes. It's painful. I know there was 10 minutes out of time, but the stats just say that it's a 90 minute game, don't they? So um, we'll go with that lineup. Very, very difficult. I am desperate for Sam Slocum to be back. I'm absolutely desperate. I don't want to dig him out, but you know, the, the positioning from Patterson was horrific on that first goal. I don't care. I don't defend him because you're you're a very level headed guy. You're. You I'm, take... I'm. I'm in. I used to be in the goalkeepers' union. To be fair, I'm not. Yeah, even... at five aside, it's a completely Old... different. No, no, no. We're all the same, mate. We're all caught from no, the same. No, it's completely block. different. Five aside, eleven aside, same thing. Same thing. Right. That that position was dreadful. Dreadful, and that's what started the fight back. And you don't expect a player to shoot from there, but we're going to have to go past in goal because I don't think unless they get the lineup wrong on Twitter again like they did last time, I don't think Slocum's playing. Yeah, caught me out that one, did, didn't it? So on the Instagram story. Yeah. So, what formation are we going first of all? Because the time we, the, the one time we switched our back four, we've been calam a calamity. I keep it same. Keep it the same. Uh huh. You're all right. Yeah, I'm fine. You want me to drive tomorrow? Because I'm not. <laughs> something's wrong with you. <laughs> No, I just think game management's got to come into it a little bit more because we've seen it works. It works okay. for 70 minutes. It works for 70 okay. minutes and maybe change it a little bit later on. Maybe okay. see, out the, see out the game, be a little bit more... Just preserve the result. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're two in a lot. You don't need to go and get another three goals. I know they like to bat on about, oh, we want to score lots of goals. and But once you're two in a lot, you're two in a lot. Just mm. manage the game a bit better. Do you know all it would have taken, and Neil just said his name there in the chat, Matty Palmer, all it would have taken from a player like Palmer, he, I'm thinking of Palmer because he'd have been the best to do this, or, you know, possibly, possibly Jim, is once they got the man sent off, it was all them. Get the ball down and just pass it. Keep the ball. Even if it's for one minute, two minutes, it would have disrupted 30 seconds because the ball was, it was too frantic. We're trying to go for a third because we thought, this is a chance to redeem myself. That's the, that's yeah. what I think. I think we thought it was a chance to redeem myself against after what happened against Woking. Just slow it down. A 2-0 win 
and not scoring any more would have been better in the situation we're in now. And I do want to say, I didn't get to say this on the last video because I was moaning about Norse. If there's any Halifax fans watching, that was incredible from them. So fair play. And from the sounds of it, they're a very good side. You know, they've beaten us, they've beaten Chesterfield, I think. So fair play to them. I don't want to seem bitter about that. Because uh, if, uh, uh, if Norse was the other way around, <laughs> <bro. laughs> yeah, looking that they went down to 10. I'm uh, if that was the way around, I'd be swinging my shirt around, running around my own house. Like, I'd have been going mad. But anyway, four at the back then. I'm going, and you can go after Kelly Evans, Lacey with a knock, Cameron, if he's back. Joel. That's. Has to be Joel Ta for me. Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you going as your back for? Agreed. I agree with you. I was same. going to say the same thing. Yeah, Kelly I Evans think Joel, Joel has to come in, man. Yeah. Yeah. Not to say that Chick I think Chicks has been all right. But, yeah. Yeah, no, Chick really Chickson is good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, midfield two then. Who are you going with? don't know. I've not really thought about this bit. <laughs> Palmer. Some... Yeah. And Vincent for me. Put him in. I he looked tidy. He looked, he looked very tidy in the three and a half minutes I saw against... Uh, Woking, I think it was. The problem, the problem you have for me with uh, with that is you've got Palmer, who's for me a more of an advanced midfielder than he would be. We've seen it; he's better going forward than he is screening the, the back four. Um, and then you've got Vincent, who, from what little we have seen of him and heard of his style, he's pretty similar to Palmer, and that he likes to be a bit more advanced. And then. In front of them, let's say you you go Nemain, Rodriguez, Roberts, Mitchell, whoever you go for. For me, then you've got you've got four players. You're basically playing four one. Four one. Yeah, that's all right. I don't think it is. Not with no, full backs. Not, I'm joking, not I'm with full backs like Joel Taylor. Because Joel Taylor is play, like he he gets up the pitch. And we need someone to sort of tuck in when he's doing that. And I don't think it's it's not that Palmer and Vincent aren't the quality players they are, but we we need another defensive minded midfielder in there to help with the defensive side of things. So I'm I'm really leaning towards Francis, you know, because you you've got to think as much as I might face a bit of criticism for saying that in the games that he hasn't played, we have missed that player, and yeah, he's got a mistake in him, but. I feel like what 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 more can you do? Do you know what I mean? Like we have to try it. We have to try it. We missed him in the games he has played as well. Especially <laughs> a passenger like. <laughs> oh, he, no. In the Torquay game in the first half, he made more passes to Danny Wright than he did to Knott's players. Yeah. yeah. You love a Danny he, Wright impression. Um he, he can be clumsy. He can be clumsy. But then I'm thinking if, he if he's play if he's playing that role and then he's pinging them out to Joel Taylor and you know, his, his, his wayward passes, it, they're not great, but, you know, his passes that he, he pings left and right. I'm not being, I'm really not not being, like, I'm not trying to be ridiculous here, but you're saying he, but he puts the passes out to Joel Saylor. This is a genuine question. I'm not I'm not trying to wind you up. What Go else on. does he do? You told me he's putting the passes out to Joel Taylor. That's very niche. It's very <laughs> niche. No, no it, it, it is niche. Well, what else is he doing? No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> he's, you can't no, but he's staying back. Team. He's staying back. He's a holding midfielder. No, he's you doing can't holding play with a team doing. putting passes that, out to Joel Taylor. But we, do, we don't have another player like that in the squad. Like, you can put Jim O'Brien in there, you can put Palmer, you can put Vincent in there. They can instruct him to do certain things, but they're not going to do it to yeah. the same ability of, of a defensive midfielder. I've just got an image of Bertrand with his little notepad, like Francis in the team to pass to Joel Taylor. <laughs> like, <laughs> his passes to Taylor are class, but no... And uh, I'm, I'm giving him a bit of a bashing again here, but yeah. if he does come in, he's got it's his, it's his opportunity. But I think to mm. myself, he was a bit nervous in a side that were doing well, unbeat, well, getting through games unbeaten. Um, mm. And if I'm not mistaken, he played it way at Wrexham, and I thought he was good. Um, I thought he was good, but to then drop him into this because it could quite easily get quite toxic if not go behind in this one. But you know. That's why you're a football player, isn't it? I get what you're saying. Yeah. And I really I do get it. And you're justified. I'm just trying to wind you up a little bit. 
these this is the thing though like he's gonna have a good fight on his hands as well against Yeovil if, if Rose is playing and I feel like he's gonna have to relish that occasion and there's, there's been a there's obviously been a lot of talks around him because if, if Birchner was thinking about putting Doyle in Francis must be thinking oh, I really really need to step up now this is it's sort of getting to the point now or never but it's sort of etching towards that way isn't it you need Doyle to look, look in his the way eyes. into the season now <laughs> yeah. you need Doyle to look in his eyes before and say you mess this up so I'm in your place Proper scare. I was scared of the funds for him. Doyle, Doyle hadn't even spoken at that point. Yeah. Just sat there. I thought, don't look at me, please. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> but, okay. So, none of us have gone with Jim O'Brien. I'm going Palmer and Vincent. Are you going Palmer and Francis? Yes. What about Palmer, Job and Francis, or Palmer, Job and Vincent? It's an away game. Switch it to a four-three-three. Maybe losing the main. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. I'm going with what, that. Four-three-three. Four-three-three, and put. Let's see what Francis Job Palmer can do. Let Palmer screen. Not bother about like just let him worry about passing to Taylor, and we'll let uh, we'll let Job do his forward runs because I'm going four-three-three. Yeah. Do you know the thing I like Jim O'Brien though? Yeah, I feel like he's more. More effective coming on later on in the game to stretch it a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah, so do I as well. I, I do get that feeling, but that's again you're losing the bit of the nastiness. Do you know what I mean? But, Cam- but Cameron is back then, isn't it? Is he though? All of a sudden, we're talking about this side. All of a sudden, Cameron might not be ready, and Job doesn't start, and then what? This is this is it's it's all things to talk about. Think start about driving home. It's very difficult. What, leave it after? <laughs> Team news is out. Oh, geez. Let's turn around. So, I would then I would then go Roberts and Rodriguez and have Wharton up top. Although I'd be tempted to say, no, nah, I, can't, I can't leave Roberts out. I can't leave Roberts out. No. Just, being, just being on the pitch makes, makes a difference. Being du- doubled up on. Yeah. Um, I really can't wait for Roberts yeah. to, to, to just really get into form, get into his stride, do you know what I mean? But what it was like at the back end of the first season when we just signed him. Frightening player. Frightening. Go on, do it, do it again. How good was he? That's how good he was. If you're watching him, you've now seen Carl Rollins play, look at George's face there. So, paints a picture. I, I feel like we forgot to say something as well. I, I want to talk about Lewis Knight. I know this is running over a little bit normally than it would, but I feel so sorry for the guy. I haven't heard anything about him. So, so sorry for him. No, I haven't either. No one's asked, but good for him, man. I think he was really close to getting a loan deal, wasn't he? Supposedly, and then obviously he pulled up with another injury. Now it's funny because it seems pretty similar to what Calab, doesn't it? Where they feel like they're getting on top of it, and then all of a sudden something else goes. So hopefully they get to the bottom of that one. And he he, he knew straight away, which yeah. is a sad thing. He put his hand in the air straight away. He was down. Uh, it just. Yeah, it, it was actually upsetting to see, and it yeah, it overshadowed that defeat for me. Like I was, I was quite bothered about it. I just want to bring this on. Um, another content respect from Norway. Really appreciate you tuning in from Norway. Um, we've got a lot of Nots fans all over the world, but yeah, massively appreciate that. And if we can bring you some extra content that you might not be able to get over in Norway, we're, oh. we're really happy to do that. Um, yeah, Roberts is a luxury player. Neil says, Ooh. A, a little. I wouldn't say completely. Uh-huh. I'd say recently, mm. it, there was more of a threat no. when when the main started, when Rollins was suspended, in behind, frightening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another good comment as well, saying Barnett versus Roberts. I forgot, I forgot Barnett played for for Yeovil. He's been doing quite well as well, hasn't he? Barnett, one good goal, and he was all right. But then M- M- Miller took him out of the team, didn't he? But yeah, it's going to be a reunion, isn't it? I remember playing Yeovil and Carl, Di- uh, was it Carl Dickinson was going nuts. Yeah, Don't Kelly Evans, on it? Yeah, Kelly Evans, I've anyone though, so it doesn't really bother me. So we've gone with our teams. So we're going to go for our, our predictions of how the game's going to pan out. If you want to put yours in the chat now, we will put a few up on the screen, as many as we can, actually. Before we go for our team, just to say, if you're not already subscribed, please do, because we are aiming for that 2,000 by the end of the season, um, and we'd massively appreciate it. And please drop the video a like if you haven't. Um, got a few likes at the minute, but yeah, please drop a like. I appreciate you all for joining us on a Friday night. Um, so, George, prediction then. I've given you enough time to think about it. Do you know what? It's going to be 
it's going to be as cagey as every other game we've played this season, I think. Uh, it's never an easy place to go, is it, Yeovil? Never no. an easy place to go, especially for Knots. A uh, couple of ex-players as well are going to be up for it. Could be. <laughs> I feel like it could swing either way. It's going to be 1-0 or it's going to be 3-2. I genuinely feel like this is the hardest of any result this season to predict. Yeah, it's going to be a reaction result, isn't it? Either way, it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be a good gauge on how the squad have reacted to what's happened in the last week or so. Yeah. Um, but would it be a paper perspective or match preview without me saying that knots are going to win? Of course it wouldn't. You've never, you've I'm never going, not. I'm going 3 2 knots. Three, two knots. Very quickly before I give mine, you're saying it's going to be a reaction either way. It can either be a positive reaction if an, or a negative reaction. What if it's a negative reaction and say knots lose 3 1 or comfortable 2 0? What then? Because then we're actually in a mess. Then you're in the. Yeah, there's trouble in, then. Then you're in territory of something I don't want to talk about. Mm. Four losses on the balance and the way it's gone, I don't want to talk about what could happen after that. We'll save that for next week, I think. Yeah, I think if that does happen, Tamworth would be a fantastic time. It couldn't come at a better time. Sort of get maybe a few different faces in, put the pressure on the first team a little bit, get a win back in us, hopefully. And this team aren't going to roll over either, you know. Um, yeah, we've just got to have a bit of spine about us, haven't we? If we lose this yeah. one and it's a comfortable loss, I mean... And, and, and then Grimsby win, you're looking at 11 points, a gap to first. Yeah, still 90 points to play for, though. I think. Yeah, yeah, but that gap's opening up quite quickly. Um, I go for my prediction. It's a must win, and Knots have been shipping goals, but scoring goals. So for that reason, I'm going 1 0 Knots. I think we will completely we'll scrap this win. I think I think we're going to, we'll, we'll get a goal. We'll have lots of pressure on us. We'll we'll give some pressure. I, I, I don't think we'll be the team on top of this game, but I think we'll scrap it and it'll be a turn. I'm not going to say the, 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 I'll say it. It might be a turning point. Um, oh. I just I just think we'll we'll scrap it and and we'll just about just about get the win. I feel like it's going to be a tricky one. So I'm going one nil. You're going. You say three two. Three mm. one. Vincent Hattrick. Han is pro Vincent. He is. Uh, Max has said, depends on the lineup very much. It will either be a 2 1 not win or 3 0 no overall. But do you know the funny thing is, e yeah. either of those are just as likely. Yeah, it could literally anything could happen tomorrow. Anything could yeah. happen. Neil's been very interactive with us tonight. Appreciate that, Neil. I hope uh, they're playing some pride for the club and dig deep. 2 1 win for knots. But yeah, that's the thing as well. They've got fans travelling down to Yeovil. You know, they have a very good away following on a very wet Tuesday night against Halifax for that. You know, Altrincham before took a great following to Altrincham. They need, need to be rewarded as well. It's not cheap going to football. Petrol. Petrol's difficult. It got me, I, if I'm Birch, I'm saying these fans have struggled to get petrol recently. Make sure it's worth it. You know? Refund agenda. Well, you know, uh, Chris, I've scrolled back to find this. Yeovil nil, knots three. Um, yeah, it, it, it could literally be anything. This seems like the most pointless prediction of a result because I have zero clue what's going to happen. Um, yeah, very difficult. That brings us to a close for this paper perspective episode eight. As I said, if you've not liked the video, please do. Really appreciate you joining us on a Friday night usually a Thursday, but just couldn't make it this week. Um, it's going to be interesting whatever happens tomorrow. We'll have a number of videos up. Um, might even get a vlog up as well. I'm going to get tucked up in bed, hot chocolate, ready for whatever tomorrow brings. Um, and I just, yeah, I hope it's positive. I really hope it's positive. Uh, th thanks for watching.